This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Make sure to hang out until the end of the episode so I can tell you all about them. Chiefs, Chiefs versus the 49ers. Two explosive offenses that could not be more different meeting in the Super Bowl. While the Chiefs have a dazzling passing attack with fireworks at every skill position and Patrick Mahomes leading the show, the 49ers have a calculated, dynamic ground game that blows teams out of the stadium. One team is the epitome of the modern offense in 2020, while the other seems to have turned in the opposite direction and sprinted back to the past. Andy Reid and Kyle Shanahan are offensive geniuses, but it's the latter who has taken a run-first approach and emasculated the entire NFC. The 49ers-Packers championship game was an excellent example of that run-heavy approach. 42 rush attempts for 285 yards and 4 touchdowns, while only throwing 8 times is completely unheard of in today's NFL, and speaks to the confidence Shanahan has in his ability to create a potent running attack. Yeah, we've all heard he's just running his dad Mike Shanahan's zone run offense, but that's simply not true. Sure, the 49ers run plenty of zone concepts, but the diversity in scheme is what makes the younger Shanahan so dynamic. When I charted this game, that's what stood out to me, the nuanced play design and incredible versatility within the scheme. In the middle of the first quarter, and Mike Pettin's first uh-oh of the game, it's 3rd and 8 with the score tied 0-0. From this down and distance, everyone expected a pass, especially the Packers. From shotgun and with this spread formation, the defense is looking to rush upfield and sack the quarterback. They outnumber the 49ers with a six-man box against five blockers. On third downs, the Packers like to bring exotic looks. They have one down lineman, outside linebackers Adarius Smith in the middle of the formation as a spinner, two linebackers outside, and coverage linebacker Blake Martinez lined up on the edge. Martinez always lines up in the second level behind the defensive line, but about once a game, he will come off the edge to try and fool the offense's protection and even got a sack in Week 12's matchup. Since defenders go straight upfield in passing situations like 3rd and 8, nobody is expecting a run. That's why the short trap is the perfect play call. Trap runs leave a defender completely unblocked and pull a backside guard to kick out that defender. This allows the left tackle Joe Staley to release through the line and seal the backside safety. Linebacker Kyler Fackrell, who often plays on the line of scrimmage, is geared up to pass rush Staley. But instead of taking on that rush, Staley swims him and knocks him on his ass, then seals the safety inside. Due to the element of surprise, the line doesn't even need to block the ends, who are rushing straight up field. This takes their six-man box and eliminates two defenders, creating a 5-on-4 blocking advantage for the offense. You can see the spinner Zadarius Smith start to pass rush through the backside A-gap, then he's completely surprised when the center pulls away from him and the left guard blocks him down and the offensive line creates a wall for Mostert to run through. First round draft pick safety Darnell Savage had a brutal day on defense. He takes a terrible angle to the ball, and Mostert flies completely untouched for 36 yards. But that was just the beginning. Overall, it was straight up frustrating watching the Packers' defense for several reasons. For one, they kept playing two high safeties to protect the deep part of the field even after Mostert had gashed them on the ground for 150 yards. But two, and more importantly, they refused to adjust their defensive front. They were most worried about the 49ers' outside zone, a concept where each offensive lineman takes a lateral bucket step play side to try and push the defensive line towards the sideline, which creates space for the ball carrier to cut back. The landmark for the running back is the offensive tackle's outside hip. This is the Mike Shanahan scheme passed down to Kyle and the very concept the Packers game plan to stop. Their defense bases out of a 3-4 front, which has three defensive linemen and four linebackers. Though two of those linebackers, Zadarius and Preston Smith, are bigger and play on the line of scrimmage, so it's basically a five-man front. 
the entire game, they would not get out of their bare front, which is a variation of their 3-4 defense. The bare front squeezes those three defensive linemen in tight and aligns them over the center and two guards. If one of those linemen moved head up over the offensive tackle, it would no longer be considered bare. They widened out the Smiths to set hard edges to force the outside zone to the inside towards their linebackers and safeties. The bare front effectively clogs up the inside running lanes and sets the edge on either side, but it leaves the C gaps wide open, so offenses can't help but design runs to attack. It. Theoretically, the Packers want to funnel the outside zone inside towards the rest of their defense. To get far enough outside of those linebackers, the 49ers will occasionally use toss instead of a normal handoff to get a speed back like Mostert around that edge. What separates Shanahan and other offensive coaches is his ability to create zone concepts within zone concepts. Look how far tight end George Kittle's split is. He is not attached to the line, instead he is matching Smith's wide split with a wide split of his own. The 49ers outside zone scheme is based on symmetry. Look at the angle Kittle, fullback Kyle Juszczyk, and Mostert are on. They're all on the same track, taking the same step in perfect sync, and that is not by accident. The zone within the zone is between Kittle and Juszczyk. They have a two-man combination on Smith and the linebacker. If Smith goes outside, Kittle will drive him towards the sideline and Juszczyk will kick out the linebacker. If Smith jumps inside like he does here, Kittle lets him go and moves moves to the second level while Juszczyk takes Smith and seals him inside. Smith knew the outside zone was coming. He tried to slant inside to take away the C-gap bubble in the bear front to spill Mostert outside to the scraping linebacker and blitzing cornerback who comes into the picture kind of late. But the 49ers adaptability within their zone scheme and Kittle and Juszczyk synergy is what creates a huge alley for Mostert. Once again, Savage had more trouble getting to the right spot than Tim Tebow on his wedding night. The two linebackers are correctly going outside to force the run back inside to Savage, but he gets lazy and loses discipline. When two defenders are in the same hole, it is never a good thing. He recovers and barely tackles Mostert by the shoelaces. This is the same outside zone toss only a few minutes later, but Zadarius Smith stays outside which switches Kittle and Juszczyk's responsibilities. Once again, Kittle aligns in a wide split to match Smith, and this time since Smith goes outside, Kittle blocks him which leaves the safety Ibrahim Campbell for Juszczyk. Another disadvantage to the bear front, or the Packers' five-man front in general, is the lack of second-level defenders. If you can clear that first wave, which the 49ers did repeatedly, there are only two defenders and tons of room for Mostert to work. Smith successfully does his job on this play. He sets a hard edge outside of Kittle, so Mostert can't run to the sideline, but instead has to make a cut upfield back towards the heart of the defense. The Packers know this forces the run to that open C gap, so they shade Campbell there to clog it up. This is the benefit of having a fullback like Juszczyk. In addition to him and Kittle's adaptability, he allows the offensive line to make easier blocks. Asking a Yeti like Mike McGlinchey to kick out a safety 7 yards downfield is a huge ask for any offensive tackle, but Juszczyk making that block allows McGlinchey an easier assignment. He does a terrific job with the deuce combo block, which asks him to start on the defensive end and climb to the linebacker, his exact assignment on the previous play. He pins the three technique inside while keeping his eyes downfield to Martinez, who flows with Mostert and runs into a brick wall. With Juszczyk's block and McGlinchey's block, there is nobody else in the second level. The Packers have two deep safeties again, which doesn't make any sense at all. So Mostert runs 18 yards before a defender even taps him and picks up 35. Shannon utilizes diverse formations to go along with his exotic play designs. Through film study, he understands how the Packers will line up against certain formations and personnel groupings. Since the defense is playing man coverage, three defensive backs are positioned over the three receivers. Martinez is covering Mostert and a safety is covering the tight end, which leaves the usual five-man front and the other safety deep. If the 49ers can clear the safety, there's really nobody else on that side of the field. They're running gun jet power. The offensive line will block down and pull a guard from the backside to kick out the end man on the line of scrimmage Kyler Fackrell so Mostert can run through the C-gap. They actually shouldn't have jet motion Debo Samuel across the formation because it brought the safety to that side where originally there wasn't a soul in sight. 
The pulling guard was supposed to kick out Fackrell, who does a nice job wrong-arming the block, which means he takes his outside shoulder and tries to spill the ball carrier outside. Mostert starts to that C-gap, but sees this all go down, so he bounces outside. When Fackrell squeezes that block, Martinez has to quickly scrape over to cover that gap, but he's a hair late. Mostert hits the gas, Samuel turns into the lead blocker, and cleans out Savage for an easy touchdown. This offense is so mortifying to defend against. Three or four fakes in just one play is not out of the ordinary. This is a concept we've seen the 49ers pull out multiple times in the last several weeks. The Saints and Seahawks were on the wrong end of it, and including this game, the 49ers have averaged 31 yards each time they've used it. Since there are several layers and several fakes, let's peel them back one by one. The Packers are once again in their bare front, with Smith in a spinner position as the nose tackle, and the two defensive ends lined up over the guards. The play initially looks like a GF counter. The G for guard and F for fullback will both pull to the play side while the rest of the line down blocks. The play is called fake counter, F windback lead, X end around. Counters are usually called against aggressive defenses who have already been burned by inside or outside zone runs and are trying to cheat upfield at the snap. Garoppolo and Mostert will start as if the play is going to their right. Garoppolo opens to his right, and Mostert takes a step and angles his shoulders towards that side as well, all of this to influence the defense. Then Garoppolo spins around, and Mostert runs behind his pulling guard and fullback. This sucks in Martinez, Savage, and linebacker BJ Goodson, who are reading the flow of the guard, fullback, and running back. However, that's not where the play is going. Juszczyk whirls around to lead block, Sanders cracks down on Preston Smith, Kittle climbs to seal any second level defenders inside, but doesn't need to do a single thing because of the defense's utter confusion. Debo Samuel flies around on the end reverse with two linemen out in front and picks up 30 yards. All of these fakes, motions, and shifts make an offense's job so much easier. The defense is constantly out of position, which leads to easier angles for blockers to execute. The Kansas City Chiefs will have to put together one heck of a game plan to account for Shanahan's outside zone, traps, power, and fake counter run packages, and that's just the running part of the offense. The Chiefs will have to play with one high safety, not two. They'll have to challenge the 49ers zone blocking scheme by bench pressing the linemen back on their heels to drive them into the running lanes instead of getting washed towards the sideline. They must stay disciplined in their assignments and play gap sound defense. If they don't, this game could be over quickly. Just ask the Packers. These two offenses are straight up dynamite. If the Chiefs can't stop the 49ers run game, it's going to be a long day in Miami. I want to thank ExpressVPN for sponsoring this week's episode. They actually totally saved my butt this last week. I was in Mexico and had to stream the playoff games on my computer. I had Fox Sports live streaming service and I was all ready to go, but then I found out it doesn't work in Mexico. Instead of flipping out, I just clicked ExpressVPN, and in literal seconds, the game was on my laptop. Without a service like ExpressVPN, our internet browsing data and privacy can be tracked by our ISP, cell provider, ad companies, and hackers. With ExpressVPN, our public IP address is masked so no website can know who or where we are. It helps unblock content that is available in other countries, allowing you to access more of the things that you want to see. You can head to expressvpn.com slash Rollins to get three months free with a one-year package, and it's only $7 a month, which is super affordable if you think about all the different things they offer. So check it out. Thanks for listening and using my code expressvpn.com slash Rollins. All right, until next Saturday, see ya.